Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and what you're looking at right here could one day be the future face of a typical mine. Today we're going to be talking about somewhat mind-blowing idea of phyto mining, which refers to the trees themselves mining all of the materials we'll ever need and thus extracting them from the trees directly. This research has advanced quite a lot in the last few decades and today I wanted to talk a little bit more about what we know and what we've achieved so far. Back when I was still in college, while well, most people were working in Starbucks or possibly working in a bookstore to try to make a few bucks, I was actually mining. I was working in the Canadian Arctic at a mine, so unfortunately my experience with mining and how destructive it can be is actually first-hand. But what I've learned over the years is that there are still a lot of things we don't understand about how to extract materials and also how wasteful and very inefficient modern mining techniques are. But there are quite a lot of very passionate and very very clever people out there, specifically several researchers, that have been trying to discover and also establish a new way for us to mine without destroying everything around us. One of these wonderful people is Dr. Ayan Choa, an Indonesian researcher working in the Netherlands, and an Australian researcher Dr. Anthony van der Ent, and several other researchers working on the idea of phyto mining by establishing the techniques and also discovering various plants that are able to do it very efficiently. But what exactly is phytomining and how does it work? A lot of this started with some of the earlier publications in the late 90s, defining and also describing how phytomining or mining through the natural processes could be actually used in various industries. And the main principle here is pretty simple. As trees grow, they need a lot of nutrients, but they also need a lot of very specific minerals and a lot of somewhat specific metals. Some of these trees require specific metals, and some of these trees require a lot of these metals. And so in the last few decades, scientists discovered so-called hyperaccumulators, trees that tend to accumulate a lot more of a certain material than other trees. And although the first suggestions of using these hyperaccumulators was to essentially clean up somewhat polluted areas, for example cleaning up various types of heavy metals that are toxic to various animals and plant life, eventually the biologist realized that you can also potentially use this for completely different means. And so several scientists started to kind of create these very large and somewhat important global databases of all sorts of different hyperaccumulators and what specific elements they can actually accumulate. Now, one of the best examples of this is in regards to nickel and a very nondescript but somewhat important plant growing in Italy known as Alyssum murale. This particular plant seems to be one of the most efficient hyperaccumulators discovered so far and given enough materials can accumulate up to about 3% of total weight by mass of nickel. Essentially, it can mine nickel directly from the soil without really putting any effort into it. And as you can see in this image from Anthony van der Ent, it then stores all of this metal inside of its leaves and essentially uses it as it needs it. The main principle here is based on the idea of various metals activating certain enzymes inside of certain plants. In this particular example, nickel is necessary to activate various flowering processes and once the plant gets enough of it, it starts storing it inside the leaves. So any excess amount is then stored inside of these little vacuoles you see inside of a plant. But in this case, once you actually cut through the plant, you can even see how the sap itself turns somewhat green because of all of the nickel present inside. In other words, what makes hyperaccumulators different from other plants is that instead of feeling any toxicity from the excess nickel or any other material, they actually evolve to store away any excess material and prevent it from damaging the plant itself, with this particular plant so far being the most efficient. But it's in Italy, and there isn't really that much nickel activity going on in Italy, specifically when it comes to mining. And so we get to the root of the problem. A lot of these hyperaccumulators seem to be located in regions where the material itself is not present. In most cases, many of these plants grow in completely different regions, and most importantly, just like a regular plant, they're not really instantly apparent. So for example, for nickel itself, one of the really easy techniques to identify such a plant that was developed by Anthony van der Ent is by using a tiny white strip that when touched to a leaf will actually change color and depending on how much nickel is present inside, it will have a much more dramatic color change. And so right now we're still kind of learning to identify these plants more efficiently. 
But even today, the database already has several thousand different entries, although only some of these plants are extremely efficient, meaning that only some of these plants will be able to accumulate enough material to make it a potential profitable way for mining these metals as opposed to the classical way of mining. So in that sense, we're still not there yet, but the theory and also the discovery so far allow us to create these mines already. As a matter of fact, one such experiment was conducted only a couple of years ago and was very successful. So phytomining can definitely become the future of mining around the planet, and most importantly, it can be a lot more efficient. But here, let me show you the visual reason for why we need this to happen. I figured one of the best ways is to try to go and discover one of the bigger mines where this is actually causing a lot of damage. So in this case, we need to zoom into Indonesia, where a lot of this research is conducted currently, and one of the bigger islands in Indonesia, this one right here known as Sulawesi, is also one of the biggest regions for mining nickel. But just like other types of mining, nickel mining can be extremely destructive. And as I zoom in here, you'll notice a lot of really empty patches. One such patch right here, this very large part, that's basically one of the bigger mines on Sulawesi, and not surprisingly, also one of the most toxic and most polluted environments on the whole island, that's unfortunately slowly spreading elsewhere as well. Now this becomes even more apparent as you zoom in a little bit more and discover how much damage has already been done to the beautiful forest here, but that's obviously not the end of this. These mines normally operate for about 20 to maybe 30 years, destroying pretty much everywhere in the vicinity and leaving behind a relatively large and very toxic spot that then becomes extremely difficult to repopulate with different plants. But it just so happens that this is also where hyperaccumulators might be the saviors. By replanting these areas with hyperaccumulators, we could potentially prevent the complete destruction of these areas. And most importantly, it could also provide even more mining and of course more profits, but obviously without any destruction in the future. Although unfortunately for Indonesia, so far very few such hyperaccumulators have been discovered here, and the most efficient hyperaccumulator in the region is from the neighboring Malaysia. So there's still a lot of research that needs to be done and also a lot of different discoveries that need to be made in order for us to find practical means to create these phyto mines or forest mines, mines where everything is done completely by itself through natural processes. Now, what's really unusual about these mines is that they would technically be carbon neutral, and absolutely no forest destruction would be needed here. All we need to do to make this efficient would be to find a way to efficiently prune the leaves of various trees, and then extract the metals from them by burning them, releasing some of the carbon into the atmosphere that's then recaptured by the trees themselves. In other words, as the experiment from 2018 showed, it is absolutely possible to have a very efficient phytomine by doing very little actual work and very little actual destruction and by having the trees do everything. And most importantly, unlike a typical mine that requires at least 1% of material in the soil to be efficient, the trees seem to be able to extract nickel and of course other materials with only about 0.1% of material present. In other words, they're even 10 times more efficient. And as we discover more and more of these hyperaccumulators that are able to extract other materials, at some point, we might be able to finally find a way to very efficiently and most importantly, extremely cleanly extract all of the needed resources, including some of the more toxic stuff, like for example, various types of rare earth metals that have already created a lot of extremely polluted areas in China which today are, by the way, some of the most precious materials on the planet because all of our electronics is based on them. And so by identifying these plants and finding a way to create efficient and, of course, environmentally friendly mines using them could be the future of mining for humanity. And because typically plants accumulate several metals all at once, so it wouldn't just be nickel, it would also be iron and possibly something else, we would be able to create mines that can extract several metals at once and thus produce things even more efficiently. But for a second, let's talk numbers as well. This is all based on some of the research from the last few years, and we're going to try to use this mine and see how much money could be made and how much can be extracted from something that's around this big. Now, this is a very rough estimate, but it's approximately 72 square kilometers in size. Just to make this a little bit easier to calculate, let's say it's 100 square kilometers. 
So let's say it's now turned into a phyto mine where all of the extraction is done by processing these leaves pretty much every year for the next 20 years. According to all of the modern research, hypothetically this would produce roughly around 1 million kilograms or around 1000 tons of nickel every year, with almost no use of any kind of resources other than collecting the leaves with somewhat simple processing techniques and also absolutely no emissions or any destruction whatsoever. Now this is maybe not as much as the actual mine produces, which seems to be at least 50 times more, but it's much more clean and eventually we might be able to do this more efficiently if more effort is put into this as well. Right now these numbers are just based on the few experiments that were conducted by scientists without any use of efficiency whatsoever. But if a lot of resources are put into this and also if a lot of development is done, we could create extremely efficient forest farms, or technically not farms, forest mines. And this phyto mining could indeed solve a lot of problems for humanity. And unlike in a classical mine where the rocks need to be crushed and a lot of things need to be extracted using various chemicals, a lot of which are either radioactive or toxic, which also often releases things like asbestos and a lot of super super dangerous materials into the nearby environment, with certain mines polluting the rivers, lakes and even oceans nearby to the extent where nothing can survive in them, thus actually damaging the ecosystem and of course damaging the potential financial benefits from these regions, a typical phyto mine on the other hand would have a completely opposite effect. All of the dangerous toxic materials would still be stored inside the plants, they would not be released unless we actually wanted to release them. And all we would have to do is extract the sap from the leaves or the shoots of the plants that are absorbing all of the materials. And instead of having something like this as a permanent leftover of the mining industry, this is probably what the future phytomine might look like. Something that has different types of trees depending on what we're extracting from them, something that's very efficient and extremely environmentally friendly. But why is it that this is probably the first time you've heard of this and why is it that no efficient phytomen exists just yet? Well, it's actually because, in some sense, there is no Elon Musk of phytomining. There is no one individual or one company that wants to break this stereotype of mining and wants to take risks and develop something completely new completely extraordinary. In other words, it's really the lack of interest from typical mining companies in trying to develop this and the lack of resources from people that actually care and want to make a difference. In this case, the researchers. They just don't have enough money or support from anywhere to make this a viable solution just yet, even though all of the theory connects perfectly. And so, in other words, if you are to some extent influential, rich, or have the potential to change the future of the planet, this is probably the best thing you can do right now. Maybe reach out to those researchers, maybe try to fund their research even more, and possibly one day become the Elon Musk of environment. And that way you can maybe change the future of mining and of course change the future of the face of our planet. Make it look something like this instead of something a little bit more disappointing. But anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out all of the papers I mentioned in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about sciences and, of course, space sciences as well. And maybe support this channel either on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. No, but seriously, Elon Musk, if you ever watch this, like, maybe put a few billion dollars into this because it will transform the planet. It is definitely a much better investment than going to Mars. And that's my personal opinion.